All right, everybody, come on in, come on in. I'm so excited that you all are here. Thank you so much for being here. No problem, Lucy, you're in the chat. I am so excited. I'm going to introduce you all to someone else very special to me. But for anybody new here, hi, I am Maggie, your substitute teacher. Uh, you all know me from my cooking channel. I make food and femininity content. However, this past weekend, Lucy and I hosted the ladies from the finishing school for the modern woman. We had their graduation. And in addition to having a graduation for them, we had lots of events and lots of photos, one of which included a branding session for me and Lucy. You all have seen this picture. You all have seen me in this polka dot dress and Lucy in this red dress superimposed on each other for the better part of the year. And my editor, 10 Plus Sounds, is like, please, I need new pictures. And so I hired a longtime family friend and I'm going to bring her to the class today to introduce you all to Joy Powers. And we're going to talk all about photography and branding sessions. So without further ado, everybody say hello to Joy. And Joy, please introduce yourself. It's photography. Uh, am I unmuted? I'm unmuted. <laughs> Let me try this again. <laughs> Sorry, I'm new to this. So I'm Joy. I'm with Truly Vintage Photography. Um, have been taking pictures professionally for probably over 20 years now. Um, grew up with the camera in my hands, so shooting film, 110 film, if anyone, I'm dating myself here, but uh, <laughs> um, grew up with a 110 film camera. I shot my first wedding with 35 millimeter film. Um, started out as a portrait and wedding photographer, added automotive and went back to portrait and weddings that's actually where my heart lies cars are easy but i love working with people thank you so much for saying that all right so we're going to take a step back and then i'm going to bring everybody to the current and i'm going to show you all some of our favorites some of my favorites from the branding session Feel free to ask any questions that you have. But um, as you see, Joy's business is truly vintage photography. And I mistakenly thought that she started with the vintage vehicles. Joy has a love for Volkswagens and other vintage vehicles. Y'all know that is not my area of expertise. And so I knew her photography world to include a lot of cars. She posts a lot of car shows and things on her social media or maybe used to. So uh, Joy, could you let us know a little bit about the name Truly Vintage and what vintage vehicles mean to you? Well, let's see. My first car was a '66 Mustang, so uh, there, therein lies the vintage aspect of the vintage. Um, again, I started with 35 millimeter films, so um, incorporating that vintage feel to photography. That still, uh, I feel like I'm a very traditional shooter, not faddish at all. Um, that's what my clients are looking for. They're not looking for the latest and greatest fads, nothing against other photographers. If that, that works for them, that's great. Um, but I'm very traditional in my photography. Uh, so that's kind of where that name came from. <laughs> I absolutely love it. So let's take a step back to the a blast to the past. Joy and I actually met at church years ago, and I think like over 20 years ago. And one of the first photo sessions that she did for me, I don't know if you uh, remember this one. Let me see if I can share. Oh my goodness, y'all. There was a birthday party for a young boy. You all know him now as Swim Shady, but this is Marcus's, I believe, third birthday party. And Joy took these pictures of the kids in the backyard. There's little Marcus. And there is, who is that behind little Marcus? That would be that my would be son. My son. 
So that is Vincenzo. Vincenzo is now on his way to the Air Force, I believe. But you all can see Joy has been uh, one of my family photographers for a long time. And I love the work that she does. And I'm so grateful that she was available to shoot for us again. Uh, another blast from the past. You all know I'm a mom of two. And that was Marcus. This is Alex. He had a mother and son dance at his school, wrong way. And Joy did the photography for him. This is me and Alex when he had to stand on the, I don't know if you remember this. He had to I stand. Have to remember that. That's my favorite, favorite oh my goodness. So yes, you all can see these. This is also work that uh, Joy did capturing. I love this picture of Alex. He was all dressed up in his suit. And this was in our backyard on the swing set. Joy was able to capture some beautiful mommy and uh, son pictures of us. So just a little bit into some of the work that uh, she has done. So you all get to see. Uh, so if you would, Joy, tell us a little bit. You talked a little bit about your photography style. We're going to move into branding photos, but um, maybe anything you want to share about those old memories or kind of your photography style? So branding is a new term. That's more brand. When we think of branding, it's more of lifestyle photography, what we used to call environmental headshots, but not headshots in the traditional sense where you're literally going from chest up. So, um, again, I, when I talk to my potential clients and get to know them, I definitely explain the process to them. So the process to me is really important. Communication is really important. Of, of importance, our styles have to match. You have to like me. I have to like you. We have to be able to work together. Um, <laughs> it's very much a personality driven, uh, business. Um, I don't do a lot of heavy posing unless I'm doing weddings or let's say headshots, um, something similar to that. I like to follow my clients flow and capture their personality. So it's the same thing with a branding session or a lifestyle session. I want that interaction. I want that laughter. My favorite shots are showing laughter. Of course, each session, <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, Maggie is her expressions are amazing. She is so photogenic. I had so much fun with that. <laughs> She's the only one I know in all the years that I have done photography that can pull off pretty much any expression and pull it off well. Um, not everyone can do that. If you, I always tell my clients, if you smile a lot, don't try and not smile. It's not natural. Um, and vice versa. If you're not a smiler, we're going to work with that. Um, we try and incorporate some different stuff with different shoots, you know, press the limits a little bit. Um, but again, I do a lot of like, Q&A with my clients. Um, once we book the session, we start brainstorming on poses and ideas. We've already picked our location. So now we're talking about outfits. I am not the fashionista. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not. I have clients that are like, what should I wear? So that's when we start getting creative, might go on Pinterest and look up some outfits and some ideas, but it's all about comfort. Um, again, I'm going for natural, so make it as natural as, as possible. I love make makeup artists that do great work. I have had some clients come to me with some not so great makeup. <laughs> So it really like it helps if they match your skin tones. It's it's really helpful. That's a Absolutely. that's another part that again I don't I don't have. <laughs> No, and this is why we hire the professionals. So I want to take you all, I'll walk you all through the process. I was showing a little bit of Joy's website. I have linked her website in the description and also her cash app is in the banner if you all want to support her. But hiring professionals is really important. And I believe in treating professionals as professionals. Uh, when I knew we were going to have this graduation weekend and Lucy was coming all the way from California to Atlanta, it was actually the first time that we had met in person. So I really wanted to solidify the date 
Joy was an absolute dream. She was looking up different studios and different places that we could shoot. Since I had an Airbnb for the ladies, I was thinking, well, it would be nice if we had our own place to change in and out of clothes. And so Joy actually made time to come to the Airbnb in advance, check out the lighting. She was asking us what we were going to wear. Uh, you all know I have to hire a stylist. Rhea made sure that we had our makeup done so that the photos that we took looked incredible. So that process and that planning, don't skip on that uh, because you end up being rushed and then you forget things. Joy even gave us props to use in the pictures and everything that goes uh, along with that. And so I'm going to show you all some of the pictures uh, that we took. But the whole branding session, I'm glad you said that was new because it's new to me. I know what a headshot is, right? Those of us that if you're on LinkedIn or any of these places where you have just kind of that picture of your face, that's like your professional photo, but how is a branding session different? What does that actually mean? Ah, oh, that's for me, sorry. So a branding session, you know, again, traditional headshots are from about here up. So right about right chest up. Um, I call those boring sessions because I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You're, you're grabbing a couple shots, you know, there's not a whole lot to it. Make sure your lighting is even and right. Um, but branding is really capturing that personality. Again, I need to understand that client's business. I worked with a realtor a year ago to do her branding session. So I was formerly a realtor. I definitely helped. So I understood her world a little bit, but Maggie, I didn't understand your world. So there was a lot of questions. Okay, what does this entail? What does this involve? What are we trying to capture? Because if I don't understand your business, I can't capture the brand. The brand is you ultimately, you're marketing yourself. So again, it's capturing that personality. So those questions, those conversations that we had prior to the session, it's really critical in getting those images. It's critical that I look at all the options that we have and the final option that we make before I show up. So I'm fully prepared to get what you want as the client. Um, very rarely do I show up and I've not previewed a location. That is such a good point. I'm going to start sharing with you all some of the photos that Joy took, but I love what she said about capturing the essence of the brand. And a lot of times we don't realize this, but if you're a content creator or like Lucy and I teach the finishing school, what Joy said is, is right. I had to explain to her, okay, we kind of teach this online school for ladies. It's about femininity. We teach elegance. We teach etiquette. So we want to have some pictures that are kind of like teacher mode. But then also we're going to be doing a finishing school, not finishing school, an etiquette summer school for kids. And so we wanted to capture some pictures in a little bit more casual in our Maggie Lou sweatshirt. Doesn't Lucy look beautiful? And she says she's not photogenic. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Isn't she amazing? But Joy really just told us to kind of be natural. Like, I love this picture. We're holding. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you staged us here, because I have some questions, too. I honestly oh. don't know that I staged you very much in that picture, to be honest. I grabbed some cups. I wish they matched a little bit better, but we had to work with what we had. Um, they matched the background. They matched the pillow. Um, they compliment you and you all look really good in that color. I'm just going to say that that, mar that burgundy, that maroon is like popping on both of your skin tones. Lucy gave me one of the best compliments ever when she told me she felt completely at ease and comfortable and had fun to, to say it. when a client tells me they're not fond of getting their pictures taken, which I hear a lot from spouses. They're just kind of dragged along to the shoot. They don't want to be there. But at the end, they're like, I had so much fun. Fun is fun is key no matter what we're doing. If we're doing, as I call them, boring headshots, let's have fun with it. Because I'm, my goal is to create an experience. I want you to come back. I want you to enjoy the process. It's very intimidating. And it's vulnerable being on that side of the camera. I have worked with models. I have been on that side of the camera not comfortable on that side of the camera. I understand the what people are going through because I've been there. I think that's really critical for a photographer is to be on that other side, whether we're comfortable or not. And most of us are not. Uh, when you ask me for a recent headshot, I'm like, oh, mine are like 
old. <laughs> Shamefully so. I'm about to update that here in the next couple of weeks. So wait for it. <laughs> that is not an easy process, let me tell you, trying to take your own pictures. But um, yeah, I forgot what to, now I forgot where he's going with all that. But yeah. No, it's fine. You totally answer that. And yes, Lucy did say that. That explanation put Lucy totally at ease. Now I have to be honest with you all. I've been doing professional photography. I've shared with you all since the maternity shoot of Alex, and he's 14 now. And I do this at least every year. So ladies in the finishing school, um, just so you know, we're we're already planning for next year, and I'm already getting ready to rehire Joy because I want Lucy and me to take new photos every year plus gift this to the um the finishing school students if you all were with us for the magianos um photo uh the recap these were pictures that joy took joy took these pictures of the ladies the group picture the uh, individual pictures so looking at um let's go back to this one for example you all are so comfortable and natural no one is stiff and I didn't tell you, I tell my clients all the time, uh, I'm certified in yoga. So when I tell you to take a deep breath and exhale, it really makes you relax. And usually I get giggles. <laughs> I didn't get a whole lot of giggles on this one um, when I did that with Lucy. But um, I usually get giggles, which again, it like super relaxes you and it, it really helps. So I added that um, to my sessions when I'm working with someone that I know is a little uncomfortable. And usually the first, first 15 minutes or so, we're warming up. We're getting to know each other, how we work together, how we flow. Um, so it's a warm up. Your all's warm up went really well. Um, again, because you all just started dialoguing and it was so natural. The Really the most part of the posing was like, okay, pause, don't talk. So we're not getting those crazy mouth open shots that are, are really awful. Um, <laughs> and there were some. You'll never see them, but they, yeah, they, they're, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So when I look at this one, so you all can see. So in addition to the um, the pictures for the finishing school for the ladies, I wanted to capture some casual photos. So we have the Maggie Lou um, uh, sweatshirts on here and we're just doing jeans and sneakers. And you can see that Joy had she literally went to the cabinet of the Airbnb. She got these cups. They're empty. And she just told us to talk to each other. And I love how she just captured this natural expression here. I wanted a, a something comfortable and casual. But you mentioned skin tones and I definitely want to talk about this. My family, your family, we have every color underneath the rainbow. I'm African. Lucy's Latina. Um, but I I love how the pictures that uh oh the pictures that you took joy really captured the natural um, I'll go through some more of these our natural uh, skin tones uh, Lucy's five two I'm five seven so how do you work with what do you do when you're working with you know different skin tones different proportions how do you capture that Ooh, different skin tones can are can definitely be a challenge um, it's years of practice. It's years of understanding lighting. Um, I mean, that's what I tell people. Practice makes it better. It doesn't make perfect because there's always going to be scenarios where you're challenged. That was a chat that theoretically where we shot could have been challenging. But because I came prepared, I hadn't met Lucy beforehand. I did see pictures of her. Your skin tones complement each other, so they're not so far off where it would make it super challenging um, to shoot. Um, film, definitely. Digital, I love that picture. Digital makes it easier, I will, I will tell you that. Um, we were fully prepared. Um, a lot of Q&A. Um, what was the other part of my question? So we talked about skin tone. Yeah, we talked about skin tone and, and yes, I think I, I absolutely love that. Uh, we're going to talk about proportions in just a second, but I love that I look like myself and Lucy looked like herself. You know, sometimes when you take pictures in a group, you know, some people may be, you know, overly exposed and bright. Some people it's like, okay, where are you? I don't see you. So I, I thought that was amazing. And I love what you said is it's really a lot of practice and knowing and lighting. And this is why we hire professionals to actually do it. I don't know the difference between film and digital. Maybe you can explain it. I just think the pictures looked amazing, but yes, whatever you'd like to share. So 
So yes, definitely editing helps. So when you mentioned, you know, I was just talking to a photographer recently and they mentioned, I mentioned how I love the reflection that they got in the Chrome Hubcap. And the photographer was like, I'm surprised the sky is actually blue. When you're dealing with dark and light, as photographers, we often run into that. Either someone's going to be too dark or they're going to be too bright. We have editing software. I don't do heavy editing, but I will bring out those shadows in, in skin tones and make them as natural as I possibly can. I don't airbrush because I want my clients to look like them. Obviously, if there's some blemishes, you know, you've got a pimple. I've had clients that have, you know, the day before, <sighs> we'll take care of that in post. That's 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 an easy fix. Um, but, yeah, even skin tones, if you, I'm what we call a straight out of the camera shooter. I am, when I show up to a session, I want my pictures to be as exact as they possibly can be in the camera because I do not want to sit behind the hour working eight hours on a single photo. So the closer I get it to the way I want it to be in camera, the less I have to do on the backhand side. Again, your skin tones complement each other and are not so different that I had that issue. Even with that group shot, that group shot, that, that was an amazing group of ladies because we took probably half a dozen to a dozen shots and no one's eyes were closed. Not a single lady's eyes were closed, which is highly unusual for that many people. So that was impressive. <laughs> I love that. And if you would explain for me, because I don't know, what does that mean when you say me and Lucy's skin tone complement each other? Is it melanated uh, skin? Um, I love this picture of Lucy. I love that your pictures aren't too posy posy. To me, it just looks like she's, you know, having a, a moment in thought. And I just think this picture for someone who says, oh, I'm not photogenic. I think Lucy looks stunning here. What do you all say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Lucy, definitely. I think that was the first thing she told me. Hi, I'm Lucy, I'm not photogenic. Okay. And as I'm showing her the pictures and she's like, oh, wow, I love that. I'm like, you are photogenic. Maggie, you are very photogenic. I have worked with you. Um, I have ideas for colors for next year's shoot already. We need bright colors because that blue polka dot that you wore, Lucy, if we could have shot with that longer, that pink dress you had that we pulled out for the last 30 minutes-ish of the shoot, if we could have shot with that longer, I think we need colors next time. A lot of colors, less black, more colors. Again, that burgundy, your skin tones are similar. So your skin is obviously darker than Lucy's, but hers is not like mine. Again, I brought in artificial lighting to help. So that definitely helps um, with the lighting in there because we had some definite dark corners. Um, but we worked with it. And I think the results, you're happy with those results. So I'm happy with the results. I'm very happy. happy. And I was in love with a lot of those shots, especially at the beginning. But, but yes, that, that polka dot dress. wait till you all see Lucy in the polka dot dress. Now, now this is on me. So we had put together like our own kind of like Zoom graduation picture and we had black and pearls. But I've learned this from my stylist, Rhea, who said black doesn't photograph well. So I was thinking, OK, let's do an in life picture with the black and I will show you all the pictures that we took in in black and you can already tell they're okay i mean of course joy joy did an amazing job but just having the black and the pearls on in person i'm just gonna zip through these so you may see some of these 10 plus sounds may do some of them but we we do look okay but i agree and i know ria would smack my hand we need to have a lot more color, color we color. were trying to go for the teacher vibe but okay yeah just a few of the black ones but what would you say about photographing in black so black is actually a good color to photograph especially um so i do maternity suit shoots as well and i tell my pregnant moms to be don't wear black if you want the belly to show because it hides everything, which is great if you're trying to hide something. But black doesn't pop like the colors. I can't wear pink like you wore pink. I would look crazy wearing pink. 
He looks like great wearing that color pink. Lucy looks great in that blue. I might be able to pull up the blue polka dot dress, maybe. But I love that pink. When you sent me that picture, uh, you gave me three options. It was the pink. Definitely. The pink. And those shoes. How did you get them to match? Stylist. Stylist. <laughs> Absolutely. And you all, uh, Joy uh, mentioned something that she just kind of glossed over, but I want you all to know before we had the shoot, because the day of the shoot, when Lucy was here, literally we went to get our makeup done and then Joy was already at the house setting up and it was go time. But all of the prep work before Joy was asking me, okay, what are you going to wear? And I would send her pictures of what the stylist was thinking of putting me in. She said, yes to this. That's a great color for you. Like she was kind of coaching us through and i agree with her like lucy says the color definitely rules shantia says the pink is lovely thank you all for the compliments um but yes you'll see more color towards the end we will definitely do more color next time i think uh black was an idea but you know it's it, we we just look better in color and i know you said that the pink wouldn't look great on you but joy has olive skin you are sicilian she speaks full uh sicilian which i've learned from you is not italian similar uh but not the same but yes uh finding what colors um work on you it just i think it makes the uh, the photos uh come to life so definitely more color next time anything else to add no, uh, you made a good point. So I do. That is one of the questions that I ask my clients. So usually a week prior, uh, especially if we're outdoors, I'm doing weather check every day up leading up to the session. And at, during that weather check, any last minute questions, um, you know, reminders of what we need to bring, make sure you're hydrated, make sure you've had a snack and you're not like stuffed, just a light snack. That's good. Bring a granola bar, carry your water. Um, what are you wearing? Because I'm I'm formulating based off of the location, based off of you, the people that I'm working with, the family I'm working with, the clients I'm working with. I've formulated pictures in my mind. So that last minute pull together of outfits for prom sessions, not it's not such a big deal. We know it's going to be a fancy dress. I mean, but if we're changing outfits for sure, or I'm working with a family. One of the big things is don't show up with logos on your shirts, big logos, big words, because when I'm posing you and again, no heavy posing, but I might have you adjust your body. I might have you chin up, chin down. We do a lot of that um, because, you know, no one knows how to naturally pose their their face. So there's a lot of that. OK, just, you know, and it's never like slight moves of the head. It's like, no, just a little bit more. Um, but if you have wording on your shirt, the way we're posing you is going to get cut off and it's going to look funky in the end results. So all of that matters. All of those little tiny details, they make a difference. I did a wedding once years ago where the bride and groom both told me, I hate having my pictures taken. And the day of the wedding, I said, we cannot go into the wedding with that thought in our head because it's going to show in the end result. That wedding looks like an arranged marriage from like the early 1900s. You remember that pose we did, the, the mafia pose? Like that. <laughs> the whole, the only like po pictures I don't are like during the reception when you know you're getting all the candid shots of dancing and interactive. But all the formal poses, they literally look like it was a gunshot wedding. Um, and it wasn't, but they went in with that mentality. I have never told a bride when I showed up and they were getting ready to have more to drink so you can relax. No, I've never done that. She was so like, I hate this. I'm like, it's going to show. You just spent a fortune on hiring me. Such a great point. And I love that. I remember when we had Caitlin on before, she said the same thing, like the camera doesn't lie. And so, I mean, consider that you all, even if you don't think you're photogenic, even if you hate having your picture taken, try, and I am not the professional, but listen to the professional, try to relax and enjoy the process because I think it would be better 
to just go with it and then let's say you end up hating the pictures and you don't uh, show anybody, then that's fine as opposed to it really being like a great session, but your mindset was so like, oh, this is gonna be horrible. You don't allow yourself to just you know experience because I, I love memories and I think professional photography is absolutely worth worth the investment. Uh, I like it for me. I like it for my ladies. And um, as a content creator, we need them as well. Speaking of content creators, I'm going to show you all a few silly faces that I made. Now, this was by request of 10 plus sounds. Those of you all who know what a thumbnail is, sometimes, you know, like I have the same polka dot dress here. <laughs> Maggie's in the same polka dot dress here. You all are seeing a theme here. Same polka dot dress here. Same polka dot dress here. So he was kind of like, okay, we need some other pictures. So 10 plus sounds, my editor told me to make several crazy crazy faces. You all have seen them on the thumbnails like, oh my goodness. So Joy was able to capture these. I have my pink dress on, but you all can kind of see I'm making uh, some of the, the faces. You may see these in some thumbnails coming your way soon. Like, oh my goodness, why do I look crazy? This is not for me. This is, uh, caption this, okay? We don't like whatever that subject uh, is. I don't know what's going on here, <laughs> but literally I was just making faces and Joy was capturing these so that I can give them to the editor so I can have more than one expression for the thumbnail. So Joy, had you ever done these type of um, <laughs> crazy poses before and any feedback on these? That was so much fun. I have not. And the fact that like you were just moving as I was clicking, like, and the way they turned out, that's why I said you can pull off every expression and it looks absolutely not forced and natural. You're the first person I have worked with that can do that. I actually want to grab a group of kids and just do this. Like put them in front of the camera and have them make crazy faces. I think those would be the best portraits of children because they're already silly. Like let's just, and that's what my son did. Like he still is almost 19 years old. Ask him to take a serious picture and smile. No, first he's got to act silly and goofy. We've got to get through that. And then in that mix of pictures, we might get one that is serious where he's actually naturally smiling. But no, it's a bunch of like, I loved that. I think I laughed the entire time. My um, my strobes were not keeping up. You can tell, like I tried to lighten some of them. It's also when I will say as a photographer, when we're editing, so it may look spot on on our computers, but when we send these over, depending on how your computers are, or phones are calibrated, it can adjust how the pictures look. So we calibrate it on our end, and then, I mean, the average person is not going to have their, their computer screen calibrated for that. But, yeah, that 10, 5, 10 minutes of emoji faces, hilarious. <laughs> the, the entire session was fun. And I think you probably heard me, maybe more so Lucy, then you relax. I do say that a lot during the session. I did that with the senior senior session I had. Although she was giggly from the start because she was super nervous and you could tell she was super nervous. And I was like, I, I love the laughter, but this is nervous laughter. But she, um, I had to tell her to relax. So, because again, people get stiff in front of the camera. I get stiff in front of the camera because I'm behind the camera. That's where I'm comfortable. This whole, this is not my not my world. What you do here is just it's not my world. <laughs> I love that, that one. one. <laughs> I know, right? The one where you're like frustrated with the with the kids, like, oh, it's really hard to get to that. Oh. The thoughts. Again, pictures are are you pictures should tell a story, even if it's a branding session, even if it's a family session. Pictures should tell a story. That's why I love weddings. They tell a story. You're capturing emotions. You're, the interaction between you and Lucy, there's emotions. There's facial expressions. They're natural. They're not forced. I don't want anyone to look. Remember glamour shots? Again, I'm dating myself. 
Okay, let's talk about AI um, imagery. That's the modern glamour shots. AI is not real. It's not real. I didn't know and people were really using AI. AI. I listen a lot to women because, you know, we have a lot of insecurities in how we look. So it's important to me to take, make a mental note. So if it's something that I can correct in post, like I worked with a client once and she had lines on her neck that she was really self-conscious of. And I heard her mention it and she didn't mention it just once. It was a couple of times throughout the session. So I made a mental note. And when I got home, I didn't remove them all. I just lightened them up. So when I delivered them, I didn't tell her. When I delivered them, she wasn't going to be focused on her insecurity. She, and she loved the pictures of her family. Her husband loved the session. And he was, yeah, not wanting to be there. Done like his pictures. Like, typical. Um, <laughs> I love that. And yes, we remember glamour shots <clears throat> and the feather boa back in the day. Absolutely. So you all saw that literally joy was clicking and I was making faces and doing all that. So you all may see those. So I, I have to, you know, again, thank joy for giving me some additional uh, facial expressions because I've had one this whole time. Now we have made our way to my favorite. This is uh, our pink and blue. I absolutely love Lucy in this dress. The colors just jump off of the screen. Um, and I would like for you to share. So since we're side by side here, you know, Lucy's petite, I'm plus size. How do you stage when you have different sizes of people? That is an excellent question. Again, we're looking at complimenting you and not focusing on those areas that you're not fond of. You mentioned one um, that you, where you weren't fond of. I heard you. Again, it's about posing you so we're not emphasizing what we don't want to emphasize. So how we turn, it's very unnatural when I say turn in just your upper body because naturally we want to turn our whole body waist up, waist up. It's still not natural. Even if I say just here or show you, anyone, most people are turning all the way in. So again, it's it's angling you the way I had you sit on the couch. All right. We weren't fond with the, the start of it. Okay. Let's readjust. So it's all about the small adjustments. A lot of times it's nothing major, but yeah, that pink and blue. Yeah. Yeah. We will definitely do more <laughs> color next time. I promise y'all we, we learned, but uh, yeah, this, this pink and blue. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with black. Black is a very professional look. So the black, when you were mentioning you wanted to go for that teacher look, that black works for that scenario. Although, Maggie, you can pull off the black polka dot as well. That looks really good on you. Um, but the black works. So for that very professional look, black is perfect. We don't think color is when we think professional, although we could change that image <laughs> because colors are very feminine, right? Black is harsh and you're going for feminine. That is such a good point. I had never heard that before. Lucy, you got that? So we'll have to switch it up. Joy just said black is very professional, but black is harsh and colors are feminine and we teach femininity so ladies take it from the photographer i absolutely love this picture of lucy um my guy loves it i mean for the lady who says i am not photogenic how relaxed and we were moving furniture i think there was a chair here we <laughs> moved <laughs> yes we moved it around i love lucy in the polka dot blue doesn't our uh, our Lucy looks so absolutely stunning. I mean, look at that blue on her. Um, oh, yes. So thank you for working. We all have problem areas, you know, and I, I've shared. Uh oh, I don't mind. Where are we? I don't mind saying, you know, my problem area is my midsection. And so I was a little self-conscious about that. But but um, but joy made it so easy for me and lucy to just show up so so beautiful you want to say anything about rearranging this space oh my goodness wow yeah i think we moved everything when i previewed it the design of the living room was slightly different so we rearranged it before we started um and from then on we continued <laughs> yes where lucy is standing there was a chair the table was to her right um so 
away from the stairs. Uh, there was a bunch of stuff on that table. <laughs> we literally rearranged that entire living room. We took the chairs from the dining room. Um, it was all about creating a look and making sure that, again, everyone was comfortable. For Again, for one who said she's not photogenic. Well, when we got to... Uh, the, the images with the cup and sitting in the dining room. Yeah, she was just moving. Because I tell, um, again, I worked with a lot of models, so I study how they work. Models are trained to do what they do. They make it look easy. It's not easy at all. These ladies are in front of the camera for four, five, six, seven, 12 hours a day constantly. But it's like a dance. I liken it to a dance. So you're moving slightly. I'm clicking and I'm adjusting you as you move. Sometimes I come up and physically adjust you. Sometimes I verbally adjust you. Sometimes we do both. Or sometimes I show you. Time, you know, um, we ran out of time quick in that two hours. That two hours went fast. Goodness. So let's talk about logistics. Okay, a couple do's, a couple don'ts as we wrap up. I love the pictures. I think Lucy and I are set for the next year. We will do this again. I mean, you all know I stream every day. Lucy streams with me. She streams on her own channel. So now we have new and fresh images. But having been through this, I guess planning for, for us for next year, but in general, we filmed at a house. I know you weren't thrilled with the lighting. Um, you also recommended a studio. Selfishly, I was like, I know we're going to do wardrobe changes, so can we just stay at the house? What should people consider as far as shooting locations at home, outside, or in studio? Any pros and cons? So if I'm working with a first-time client that is not comfortable in front of the camera, or has never worked with a professional photographer, we usually choose an outdoor location that they're comfortable with. Because when you add lights in a studio setting, even let's say at the Airbnb where we shot, it's very intimidating. You've got these strobes flashing, you've got all this extra stuff going on. Whereas when we're on location, for me personally, I have a camera and I have a speed light, we'll call it a flash for layman's terms, but it's not quite the same. It adds, it's a little more powerful than just like the pop-up flash. So it's less intimidating. And that person is comfortable in that environment. So that's what I'm always looking at first when I'm working with a client. I will never, ever, ever work with a client that I have not done a consultation with. Because if we're not a fit, I'm not going to work with you. I can shoot almost anything. But I don't do newborns. <laughs> I don't do all that cutesy little. I don't do that. Um, <clears throat> after newborn up. Unless you want traditional kind of natural newborns, we can do that. But not that cute little, what is that, Anne, whatever her name is. I don't do that kind of stuff. It's cute. Your kid is going to hate you when they're, like, older. But, you know, that's a whole other story. So natural environment. If you've been in front of the camera and we can look at doing studio work. I have clients that I do studio work. I've worked with them before. They're in the music industry. So they're used to that kind of scenario. Uh, but again, it's all about comfort. What is your ultimate goal in these pictures? If we're doing family pictures, you want to do them at the house. I did a Christmas session at a house, at a family's house. They're comfortable there. They wanted the Christmas tree. Perfect. I went and previewed it first, so I understood what I was working with. So if I do need to bring extra equipment, I'm fully prepared. Because if I'm not prepared, I'm not doing my client any justice. So again, nine times out of ten, I've previewed where I'm shooting. And I know what I'm working with. If we're outdoors, you know, we've got to be flexible with weather. I rescheduled a senior session last year like three times. First time was not due to weather. That's the, that was due to another situation. But we rescheduled two more times due to weather. Third, third time, uh, it was questionable. I was like, grab a clear umbrella. Uh, we got a little misty, but we got some great shots with that clear umbrella. So I want clients to know, don't be afraid to shoot in rain. If it's heavy downpour thunderstorm, absolutely not a safe environment. But if it's misty rain, cool, grab an umbrella, let's go. I did an engagement session in February. We literally danced between raindrops. <laughs> we hit rain on the way there dry it up for the first 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes, and the last ha half, it just downpoured. And we had so much fun capturing those pictures. Um, 
and I hit some hit, hit some things on her dream list that she had always wanted to do in that session. So I unknowingly, I didn't know until afterwards. I, I reached out and was like, "Thank you for hanging in there." You know, it was a lot of fun. I know we got drenched at the end, and she was like, "Hey, I always wanted to kiss in the rain, and I got to do that." And I'm like, "Ah." Oh. Oh, see, those are those it's those little moments that matter. That is, you know, that's what I want to hear is my clients had fun. Their dreams came true in that session and they love the pictures. But if I create that experience from day one, then everything falls into place. So location is important for your comfort. If you're not comfortable, it's going to show in the pictures. And again, neither one of you had were real... Yes, the lighting was bad. I've worked with worse. I will say that. <laughs> I don't always get to choose a location. Studios are great. Um, and a lot of them do have changing rooms, too. So ah, so keep that in mind. But again, if you're trying to move a lot of stuff, you know. But studios are good because a lot of them do have changing rooms. So you still have that sense of privacy when you are changing. On location, uh, we have to get creative with changing. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love that. And I love that picture of me and Lucy. What does Lucy say? Smart business decision to meet before the initial shoot to make sure there's good business chemistry. Absolutely. I think Lucy and I have great chemistry. I love this. But yeah, Joy, what should people, I guess, what do you look for? And what should clients look for in a photographer that either says this is going to work or this is not going to work? For me, it's a vibe. It really is just a vibe. Do we connect? Are we clicking? Are we on the same page? I have clients that come to me for weddings that want everything under the sun and in an amount of time that's just not going to happen. And, and I'm going to let them know I can't fulfill what you want with what you're giving me. So I'm going to decline. It's not fair to me to take a job when I know I can't fulfill what you want. Um, I tell people all the time, well, look at a photographer's portfolio and make sure they can reproduce what they're showing you. Cause there are photographers out there that can't reproduce. They put that shot out there, that single moment shot that they just magically captured and they don't know how, and they can never recreate that shot. But it really is. It's a chemistry. It's a vibe. It's a, I don't want to liken it to a doctor relationship, but it's personality based. You want to trust that person. You want to get to know that person. So there's a lot of dialogue. You and I dialogued a lot. We text a lot up leading up to that session. I've got a wedding scheduled in October, and we're doing monthly, if not more, check-ins. Hey, where are we at? What do I need to do? Do you have any questions? Where are you at in your planning? I've already previewed the, the, the church. I mean, that was in February. She's getting married in October. Plan for big events like that. Plan ahead. Don't, don't reach out to a photographer a month ahead because you're not – I mean – Communication is key. And that's what I tell people. Communication is key. Maybe I over communicate, but I want you to know that I'm going to be in touch with you throughout the process because you need to be comfortable. You need to know that once we're done with the session, you need to understand what the process is going to be from the time we finish that session till I deliver the gallery. All of my sessions come with prints except for like branding and headshots because it's all digital based. They're not really looking for prints. And then I just did a senior session. In fact, her Princeton album just came and I was just flipping through them. So I'm really excited. I can't wait to deliver those. It's those moments, though, that, you know, when I get that text, I did a, <clears throat> I did a um, prom session last year, unknowingly that this young lady had never, she's a softball player. She's been a softball player since she was little. I did not know um, until I delivered the gallery that she had never had her makeup done. She had never really been in a formal gown and never had like that, let's call it a girly moment. <laughs> I've worked with this client before. She called me and in that moment I was like, oh my God, she hates the picture. Like she did not call me the last session. And she literally called me crying and she was like, I love them. My daughter has never worn makeup. She has never worn a formal dress. She has never done anything like this before. And I was just like, Oh my God. And I, so I was hoping this year that she wasn't going to like do the same thing. I was like, I don't know if I could take another phone call. <laughs> so again, it's, are you, are you comfortable with who you're working with? Is there some sort of relate? Have you built some sort of relationship up to that session? That is critical for me. 
That is so important. And thank you for, for sharing that joy because, um, Photos can kind of be an afterthought, or like you said, people will just call last minute. And I think photos really are that snapshot in time. And Lucy and I will always have these for the branding shoot, even though we're gonna do many more. I plan to do branding shoots every year as we change and as we, you know, offer more uh courses and you know, just we wanna always stay fresh and modern. And and you're right. I remember when you did the photo shoot with Alex and me, you gave us like a beautiful, I think it was like a notebook or I still have them, you know, up up there. But for for these pictures, for the digital pictures. I have to say, Joy, your turnaround time, we we had a weekend of events and I don't know if I want to say the time because I don't want to you say it. Okay, okay. Within 48 hours, like literally like the next day you were texting me some like little teaser photos. And then you had the, we had two galleries. So you all Joy did our uh, group session at Magiano's. Um, we actually did the branding session in the morning and if you go to her social media, you will see her like working with us. I'll see if I can pull one of them up. And then she went home and changed. I asked her to change, but I did not know she would put on a full dress and heels and then came back to Magiano's to do that. And still with all those pictures you took, your turnaround time was incredible. So for that, I'm grateful because it allows me to share, share you with my audience. You want to say anything about that? No, I think turnaround time is very critical um, in this day of digital where there's cell phones shooting everywhere. That's a big thing with my wedding clients is can we, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of them don't do cell phone free weddings. But during the formal pictures, like ask the uh, bride and groom to ask the guests to refrain from shooting. So everyone's eyes are on me and uh, 10 different places. Um Turnaround time for me is really important. I don't want my clients to wait two weeks for a session that took me two hours to shoot. It's just, it's critical that I get them to you because especially with like a branding session, I mean, you're in business, you want to get this out, you want to start utilizing them. You need this turnaround within a reasonable amount of time. My turnaround time on my contract, I believe says a week, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Um, I try to, what's the phrase, over-promise and under-deliver, under-deliver and over-promise, One, whatever, whichever way it goes, yeah. So I'm going to beat that time. And I always set that realistic based on what I've got going on. So it, honestly, I'm not the photographer that's going to spend 16 hours on the computer for a two-hour shoot. Even with the amount of photos that we took during a branding session. Okay, so... That was incredible. So I guess to wrap up, hopefully, um, well, first, Joy, let me say thank you, not only for doing amazing photos for me and Lucy, but also for my family. Some of my best memories are uh, birthday parties and events that, that you have done. Working with you was incredible. Obviously, I want to work with you again. We're already talking about 2025 for the finishing school, as well as Lucy and me. Uh, but where can people... Um, uh, find you? Are you only in Atlanta? Do you ever travel? What kind of work do you do? What kind of work do you not do? Anything you want to share about uh, the work that you do? I am based out of Atlanta. I do travel. I did a lot of traveling when, with automotive. I'm always available to travel. Love traveling. So um, you definitely talk about that. If you're not in Atlanta, we can work something out. Um, I do pretty much anything people related. Families, weddings, engagements, couples, children, high school seniors, proms, anything you can think of that I don't do boudoir and again, that cutesy little newborn stage stuff. Um, I don't do that either. Um, I applaud those photographers. They're super creative and the amount of time and work they put into that is incredible. Um, again, those, those, those kids are going to hate their parents when they're older. <laughs> But they're so cute. Um, I'm not knocking that style at all. I think it's great. Um, but yeah, pretty much anything people related. I do do automotive. I worked with Hennessy Lexus for, ooh, I shot for them for about seven years. Um, up until COVID. 
hit and then I was editor and writer and photographer for a Volkswagen magazine for ooh, probably about that same amount of time. So always available to travel, always available to talk about what you're looking for, what your ideas are, and can we make it work with with it with what I what I do. <clears throat> I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I've got a website, sort of kinda on TikTok, but not really. <laughs> I know it's a thing. I don't know how to make it a thing. <laughs> no, absolutely. You all, I cannot recommend Joy enough. I love photos. I think some of my best memories uh, are because of the photos that have been uh, captured. And I love uh, hiring real professionals to take that heavy lifting and let us just have a great experience. Lucy says, yes, thank you for making the session stress-free. And thank you, Maggie, for the experience. Yes, Lucy says she is not photogenic, but I thought she looked incredible. I think she is a pro now. We will definitely do this again. Hopefully you all learned something. I don't know if anybody had any questions uh, for Joy, but I wanted to give you all first peek at our branding session photos. So the red dress and the polka dot dress may fade away and you all will start to see more of me in pink and Lucy in polka dot blue. And I promise next year when we do this again, we will ditch the black and we will come with our um, colors. And uh, Joy has already said, whatever location I want to fil film at next year, she's going to check it out in advance. So we have um, the best photos that represent our brand. And I think you captured uh, the finishing school for the modern woman uh, excellently, both the teachers and our students. And so on behalf of everyone, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. You're very, so, very welcome. Aw, thank you. All right, everybody. Well, we are going to go ahead and dismiss. Um, hopefully this was informative. You all have seen some sneak peek into the pictures. Lucy and I will be back on Wednesday to go over more of the recap from the Sunday tea. Aw, thank you, Angel, for the hand claps. And uh, yes, if you're new here, I stream pretty much every day food and femininity content. Please check out Joy. I have linked her website. She is truly vintage photography. Y'all see it right there on all platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, plus her website. Uh, if you're here in Atlanta or want her to travel to you, please reach out. I could not recommend her highly enough. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss. Thanks everyone. Goodbye.